This one, this one's a this little. This one's sad to me. This one's sad for a couple of reasons, but uh, Mark Bustler, who's done Classic Game Room forever on it's YouTube, one of the only YouTube shows I actually watched with fair regular uh, regularity. So, a Classic Game Room really started out. Uh, Mark had a partner in the '90s. They even used to record them talking about old video games, right. like almost like a podcast format. They both had microphones. And um, his partner went on to work, you know, regular corporate job. But Mark brought it back on YouTube as Classic Game Room, one of the original sort of retro game shows. And he left YouTube for a while uh, back in late 2013 uh, because of the whole controversy with the copyright things. He's trying to start his own site and get it going on, on the site. And then he realized, I think, that YouTube was the way to go and went back to YouTube, I think, within probably six months or so. Um, but he did a daily... This this was what was good about Classic Game Room. Um, it was a video every day, for the most part. So he, yeah. he got that formula right, that let's do a video every day of a review of a game. Now, you can get into the fact that, well, the, were the reviews totally reviews in the sense of that of the word of being what you consider a game review? Yes and no. Um, a lot of times what he'd do, and he had to do this to get these videos out, would just run gameplay footage, record it you know, for 15 minutes, 10 minutes, and then talk over it and do his talking review over it, with some cups, but not as much cuts in a review as you'd like. But if you're doing a video every day, there's no other way to get them out. So that's that's how Mark built a huge audience. We're talking like 400,000 people. But there was a really nice... The, the nice side of that was that everything he did was kind of... I don't know how to put it. Cozy? It was conversational? Re- like, yeah. It, it, because, it, because those lacked... Those daily ones really kind of lacked a certain sheen. Um, it almost felt like you were talking to him about the game, even though there was obviously no discourse going on. Uh, it was and, conversational. It was reverential for the most part with yep. the games. And it, he was, he, it was it knowledgeable. Was, he was a very relatable kind of every guy, but he knew his stuff. Yeah, I, I haven't had much interaction with Mark outside of uh, video game years, emails, when he used to uh, shoot for it. In the, I think it was 80, early 80s. 80, 81, 82, maybe 83, then he stopped. Unfortunately, usually when people stop filming video game years, it's their decision. They, they don't have time for it or just don't return emails anymore. Right. That's what it comes down That's... to. I hate to say it. Um, uh, so I think, though, he s- saw the writing on the wall uh, with, with YouTube in terms of, well, this is what Mark tried to do. Mark tried to create a mini empire on YouTube. He, has, he branched out into multiple channels. With Undertow. Undertow, which was other people doing reviews under the banner, basically the branding of Classic Game Room. I think he had a pinball channel. Yes, he did. A toy channel. And one other. There was like four or five channels off the top of my head. But those they weren't really updated. I don't think they got views. Um, so I, he went back to focusing on his main channel, which was the proper thing. And I think th- it's just a sad tale of there not being a growing retro market to the extent to prop up something like that. Um, and that goes for me and anyone else, is that the retro game market, while if you're in it, you think it's big, it's not big compared to the rest of the gaming community. So if you're looking to strike it rich and hit it big on YouTube, going into retro game content is not the way to go. Case in point, video game years, where it should be a show that everyone loves uh, due to production values and, you know, a lot of Everyone who watches it. it does love it, but it doesn't get views. It doesn't get views because there's no market for it. People don't care about learning about games that came out in 1984. Well, and that's what that would be my point here is I, I while I while Mark's content was fantastic, it 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 skewed to an older audience, I think. Um, like I said, the conversational aspect of it, the uh, constant presence of uh, of a of a beer, um, the uh, the fact that he generally covered uh, not only retro stuff, but a lot of times, like he would even cover like obscure retro, like obscure arcade games. Mm-hmm. What we're seeing is that I do think there's a big retro market, but it's now a young. Whether you agree with me or not, it, what I'm getting at is it, it's a younger market, and that has been taken over by newer, flashier shows. Okay, okay that makes sense. So the retro market now is GameCube. For example, it's stuff that's ten years old, twelve years old. Sure, it's not thirty years old. Right. right. So guys like John Tron are going over N sixty four and GameCube games because they're tapping into that ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen year old market. And the more retro stuff like Super, regular Nintendo, Genesis, it's more popular games that are getting covered that the younger kids are 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 are, are watching because um because it's what they know. Okay. It, you know, they're the flagship okay. titles. So I'll change it to 
the classic game market. We're talking well, like in the title, the truly classic game room. That's, yes. there's a that's a niche market. Yes, that's an extremely niche market. Um, yeah, so he's not shutting down it entirely, but he's this isn't going to be his job anymore. He's no. going to go do a whatever corporate gig or whatever other gig, and he'll probably still put these out, but not every day. I've always wanted one of his beer mugs, and he said that once they're gone, they're gone, so I should probably order one of those. Get, get a beer mug. I would like to get a beer mug. I wish uh, Mark came out to... He's, he usually doesn't come out to any shows that I know of. He should come out to... Uh, I don't think he... I'm, I've, I'm, I've never been at a, at a show. Like if he, I think he's in Pennsylvania. He should come out to Too Many Games next year. That would be cool, at least to meet the guy. I mean... I no, he is him. he is one of the 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 guys on YouTube, YouTube who, I, like I said, I really enjoyed. He's one of the uh, stalwart. I would, I, would, I would actually like to meet one of the stalwart foundations of, yep. of the retro gaming community on YouTube. So I, I wish Mark best of luck in uh, whatever he's doing, and hopefully he still does his videos every now and then. And maybe he'll come back for video game years, uh, nineteen ninety eight. Once both, again, we're both seventy. We years just old. <laughs> we're both seventy, but like we said, that's not really his his area, you know. And I, I think that's why he's done. I'll still remember um, one of his best contributions uh, to video game years uh, was the centipede segment. He got the booming voice, and he goes, "I'm going to go play the cabinet right there." And he waves yeah. goodbye. Remember that? <laughs> then yeah. it cuts to then it cuts to Eric dancing to the centipede. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, those are, those were rough. Those early video game years episodes. 